Aloha kako, mahalo for viewing this narrated slideshow about EO, their natural history, evolution, biology, and interactions with humans. EO, also called Hawaiian hawk, are scientifically named Buteo solitarius. They are small broad-winged hawks and they present in both dark and light color morphs, with the dark birds outnumbering the light birds about two to one. This adaptation for feather color can be an advantage against feather mites in wet environments, and also for protecting against UV feather damage in hot, dry environments. EO are the most sexually dimorphic of all the other members of the Buteo genus, this means that they have a large size difference between male and female birds, with females actually being the larger of the two. When EO are seen in the sky, they're usually seen individually. It's possible to see EO interact when defending their territory or in pairs during mating. EO can be seen in family groups during an extended care period but once the chick fledges, EO return to being solitary. Over 700,000 years ago, short-tailed hawks strayed from their migration to South America and colonized the Hawaiian islands, where they evolved over time into today's Hawaiian hawk that we call EO. EO fossils have been found on Kauai, Oahu, and Molokai. This is important because it indicates that EO distribution in the past was much broader than it is today. Currently, EO only reside on Hawaii Island. But to put their evolution and distribution into context, we know that Hawaii Island didn't even emerge from the Pacific Ocean until 430,000 years ago. And we know that every island looking westward from Hawaii Island is older than that, Kauai being the oldest. The ancestors of EO arrived while the island chain was forming. EO evolved to be agile and maneuverable predators. Early EO would have eaten other native birds as its primary diet. Many of these birds are extinct today, and that includes the moho, moanalo, and flightless ibis that are illustrated at the bottom of this slide. Toward the top corner of the slide, there's a forest bird that exists today, the apapane, and it's placed there as a representation of the honey creeper radiation. Many honey creepers have gone extinct, and early EO would have predated on these forest birds. In the year 400, Polynesian voyagers arrived in Hawaii, bringing with them many of the plants that were important to their life ways, and bringing the world view that nature is essential. Many native Hawaiians feel that people cannot be separated from their environment or the plants and animals that share it. Ka'au is the Hawaiian word for stories shared over time within cultures that are a part of meaning making. An essential story for native Hawaiians is the kumulipo, the creation story. This story relates to EO natural history because it documents significant connections between native plants and animals and provides a genealogy of Hawaii's natural heritage. In this portion of the kumulipo, the EO has a role to play in the creation of the world. Hano kane ya wai ololi, o kavahine ya wai olola. Hano kanoyo, noho ikai. Kia ie ka io, noho iuka. He po u he e ikawava. He hua, he io ka aya kamanu. O kia kua ke komo. Before Western contact, EO were widespread among the islands. Native Hawaiians classified EO into groups, the Manu Hihiu Nui Ae and the Manu Ano Pueo, meaning larger wild birds and owl natured birds. EO were respected in the Hawaiian culture 
and they were considered royal birds. They were the Almakua of the Ali'i Nui. And one of the proverbs, or Olelo Noel, that has been recorded and translated reflects this respect and admiration. Kaha ka io ika malie. The io poises in the calm. Europeans came to Hawaii in the late 1700s with Captain Cook, and in 1778, the first record of EO was taken near Waimea, Kauai, by um, W. Anderson, who was a naturalist sent by Captain Cook. Over the next hundred or so years, Western naturalists wrote and observed and took collections of EO, in 1848, the scientific description was written from a specimen taken near Kealakekua. Dole, in 1879, reported an account of Io at Koloa, Kauai. And between 1887 and 1915, a number of Western naturalists learned about Io recorded their stories and distribution and collected specimens all across Hawaii Island. Not a lot is written about EO in the early 1900s, although George Monroe did infer population decline between the period of 1890 and 1940. By 1967, EO had gained federal protection under the Endangered Species Preservation Act and that launched a number of population surveys and population estimates trying to establish whether or not the population of EO was stable or declining. Either way, it became apparent that EO were restricted to Hawaii Island, and the population estimates averaged right around 2,000 births. In 2020, EO were removed from the endangered species list. However, they maintain some species protections today. This is important because introduced predators and human threats like loss of habitat, accidental poisoning, and harassment are still threats to EO. On Hawaii Island, EO are present across most island districts, but are still restricted to a fraction of what we can infer was their historic range. These birds are an important part of the ecology of native Hawaiian forests, but they've also generalized to human environments. EO have adapted to eat introduced mammals, for example, and they can be seen gliding over orchards. Even still, EO are a part of the original biodiversity of the Hawaiian Islands, and they are respected and protected members of our community.